G'day my friends and welcome to Marty's Garden Live. Yeah, my second live show for the day. We're going to kick off with a bit of the theme song. And what is the topic for today? Well, how to grow more fresh food at home than you ever need. Now, is that cool or what, guys? I just fade that song out a little bit. I'm getting used to this software here. Um, I've even learned how to use the slideshow a little bit. Well, bring images in. So hopefully we don't have to uh, just show this sort of like unedited, uned well, let's just say I'm slowly working on getting these live shows more professional without getting too deep and mysterious into it because uh, it's not so easy to do, believe it or not. But we're getting there and today's gonna be a ripper of a show and we're gonna look at how we can do this holistically. Because I really believe the future is we need to move away from these old methods, which are old now. We, used to, we When we think of old, we look back at the old, the old homesteading ways and all that type of stuff. But you've got to understand that these methods after the Second World War were taught and infused in our brain, even to like people like, um, you know, like oh, the farmers of, of, the, of the age that are just retiring now. Um, they've been promoted to and marketed to in such a way and built these habits up that really aren't sustainable long term for you or the planet or your health. And so what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about how we can actually make that a move efficiently into growing more food abundantly at home. And we need to change our mindset with this. Now, Probably, probably people thinking, Marty's going all new agey on us here and that. No, I'm actually not. What I'm doing is I, I believe that the audience is now ready to take these regenerative systems, such as uh, myself when I was studying regenerative, well, agriculture, I focused on organics. And what really got my inter interest was regenerative mode because it works the same way as, our, as God, our creator, create this planet to regenerate and recycle and the whole lot. And we just shunned it away for big marketing and moved away from this system. So what I'm gonna do is, is show you how to grow abundant food. Just think of the forest, right? It just grows abundantly. It just keeps on giving back to itself and it never needs really our input much uh, from it other than say maybe some fire control and different things like that. And we don't, we ruin it by throwing our weeds along the side of the road and, dumping buckets of, of mulch and different things like that. And we're the ones that ruin it, right? But we should be really caretakers of this and caretakers of our place where we live, right? So this is really important. What I'm going to be doing is introducing these methods and showing you some images and different things to inspire you uh, how to grow more fresh food abundantly at home and have more than you'll need because... The birds and the bees don't worry about food too much, right? But we always consistently do. But we're the caretakers of it. So hopefully I've got that message across. Uh, it's going to be like a bit of a podcasty style live video with some images, talking to you guys, get some input, and yeah, getting this rolling. So we'll just introduce some people here that have turned up for the show. Uh, Greenleaf Gardening. He's rolled up, but he looks like he has to go, man. Our young bloke trying to crank out his channel. Good on you, man. Hopefully some people will go ahead over and check you out. Give you some support. Gypsy, hi, everyone. G'day, mate. How nice to see you here. Listen, um, if anyone wants to... Uh, oh, no, this is the wrong one. <laughs> That's the wrong one. I was just going to say, if you feel like you would like to support the channel, you can do through Super Chat. It's at the bottom of the box there. Uh, the, the comments box and any small donation really really helps us lots of small things that come together to make marty's garden what it is so thank you very much if you uh, decide to do that in advance we've got a wayne's worm farm here good evening to you get a grow it alaska hello from alaska zone 4a hello there is it getting starting to cool down there or is it still warm or what's going on we got daisy hello daisy Indigru V and Pinball Wizard. Hello, everyone. And Deborah Jane Dixon. Welcome to the show. And I know there's others there that are going to be coming on and watching the rerun, things like that. So, welcome to the show, also to you. Uh, I just 
done no fancy studio here. We just shoot from the bedroom and, uh, you know, I run the software from the computer. Got a nice little microphone down here. So we should be coming in nice and clear, I believe. And what I'm going to do is I slide these images across. I'm excited that I've actually learned how to do this and I've because I get a bit flustered with technology, believe it or not, even though you think, oh, man, these videos are good, they're editing and all that. I'm always trying to improve uh, all the time. And it just, I find I get a little bit every time uh, we sort of get there. So anyway, before we get into this, I want to talk about creating the abundant mindset. And I've got my drink here. This is actually um, an organic cordial with mineral water. This, um Gets me away from other fizzy drinks and things like that. It's a bit healthier. Gets me away from Coca-Cola too. That's the whole, <laughs> the whole thing about it, right? So creating this mindset. Um, think of it like this in the mindset. The more you put in when you're doing holistic gardening, you get 10 times the result. Because what happens is it just it just gets better and better and better and better and better and better. And as we're caretaking it more efficiently, it actually becomes less work and that everything else around is working for you. And so all we have to do then is just take care of it and understand that what we take out of the garden, we need to put back if we're looking at it as an organic, holistic way of growing things. And so... Um, the second part is we need to understand how we systemize everything, right? So um, this is also like if we systemize things, and I mentioned this in other videos about having zones. So you have your zone one, which is your little veggie garden that you start and expand out with, close to the kitchen as possible. And your zone two is your little nursery area where you can grow plants. It could be anything. It could just be a table, you know, a little mini greenhouse, something like that, like what I've got. Um so you can efficiently bring food out in the season and produce some food earlier in the season. And remember, it will return more. Think of it like when you grow a tomato, right? Inside there could be anywhere from 10 to 50 seeds, which is the potential of 10 to 50 more tomato plants. Um, and so if you think of it like that, how nature gives back abundantly, when we give to it, it gives back even more abundantly. And so we get that mindset and think about um, now the opposite mindset of how we've been thinking too much is we want to fight and take on the war with our garden, especially our beginners, beginner gardeners. I've got a group called um, Small Space Veggie Gardening Australia. I think we've got like 20,000 uh, members in there. I have some people uh, take care of that for me. I'm in there from time to time popping in and leaving comments and things like that. A bit more, 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 more regularly now. I've been out of there for a while because I was just so tired and, and wasn't that well and couldn't keep up with everything. But uh, there's a, a couple of lovely people in there and Lisa, she uh, manages it for me with a couple of other moderators. So thank you guys if you're ever watching this. Thank you guys for that. But what I notice is a lot of people when they come in, these newbies, um, and we all need to start somewhere. They've got this mindset of, okay, now I'm seeing a bug. I'm seeing a snail. What do I do? I'm about to freak out. I need help, 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 help. How do I kill it? How do I fight against it? And this is the mindset that we've been actually taught by marketers, right? When we were introduced to the petrochemicals, we were also then introduced to pesticides. And so we think that we're at war with everything and we have to grow this food and defeat everything else around us, right? By throwing in more fertilizers, more chemicals, more of this, more of that, and actually making things more barren around us where we should actually be doing the opposite. We actually need to be increasing more wildlife, more insects, more biodiversity into our garden so we get better results. And when we're producing more biodiversity into our garden, what happens is the bad insects get chewed up by the good insects. You see, the herbivorous ones will come along and eat your leaves and things like that, but there will be a hunter, right, a carnivorous one, and he will actually generally eat more than he needs in his, like, a, let's just say, a good example is um, a, a six, I think a six-spotted or nine-spotted ladybird, right? They eat up to oh, six times their weight in a day on aphids, something like this, right? So there's an example. So if you've got a whole lot of them, 
uh, going into a plant where there's a whole lot of aphids, they're going to chew them up pretty quick. And you never need to put a spray on there. If you do put a spray on there, you could have just killed all those ladybugs. And there's other aphids around, they just going to explode even more. And it creates more problems. And these, the marketing systems that were selling us the pesticides, they actually don't tell you. They want more problems because then they can sell you more stuff, right? We want to go the other way. We want to think holistically and introduce these mini ecosystems to our garden. Now, you're thinking, people are saying, well, how do I do that with pot plants and things like that? Well, you actually can do it quite efficiently. Uh, with pot plants and things like that by companion planting in the pots, having more flowers around, uh, just creating more biodiversity in your potted garden as well. Now, we had a big flood here and I haven't seen a lot of insects, um, so I'm a little bit concerned about where I am, but I'm planting more, uh, I've been planting some native trees up shrubs up the side of my fence and I've noticed, I've noticed a bee come in yesterday to uh, start pollinating on some of the irregular rocket. So I was really stoked and I heard this bzzz. Yes, they're coming out with the warm weather. Um, they're on a comeback, and um, I, I, I just love it. I love it when they come in. I even don't mind when I see a few the odd bad insect because I know oh, your food. You've got to be there for food for the other guys to eat. If there's no bad insects, the good insects, which we just like to call them that, right? Beneficials. You've got nothing to eat. So you've always got to have both uh, around. So let's bring down a few more comments here. And then we'll bring across our first image for the morning. Uh, 28 degrees Fahrenheit here. Had our first snowfall two days ago. Wow, I bet you that's beautiful. Hey, Beaver from Canada. And about to start an indoor garden this week. Hey, well, good luck with that. I guess you're going to be doing grow lights and things. Um, so that's a little bit different what we're talking about here. We're talking more about the outdoor stuff uh, today and growing thinking about more of a regenerative holistic manner and looking at the systems that are used um, in regenerative farming practices and things but bring it down into a small space and i've actually always been about that but i've just never we never really had the terminology wasn't really accepted i'm probably still a bit early on bringing this forward but um i just figure you know it's time to come I'm not really a trend follower. That's probably why my channel isn't as big as it should be, you know. Uh, but uh, I just feel that this is, uh, I'm sort of like usually a few steps ahead, unfortunately, of what the trends are, are coming up. But hopefully I can install you and help you to think about how you can grow more fresh food at home abundantly and in more than, than you need by thinking holistically and moving forward in, in that direction. It's worked for me. You've seen how in the last three months I've turned a, a clay ground full of weeds and being flooded and everything like that into a productive garden uh, within uh, six weeks. Um, and it's, it's just giving and giving more and more every day now. And we're only just over three months. Uh, I made my top 20 foods to grow this winter. So I'm hyped about it. Good on you, man. Uh, Owain's Worm Farm. Any tips what to do with your strawberry plants over winter? Uh, yeah, you just need to keep them warm, keep them in some type of greenhouse. Uh, yeah, you know, you can buy the cheap mini greenhouse ones, but you can also get like bricks and rocks, bricks house, old house bricks, and put them inside the greenhouse. They'll warm up through the day, uh, and then in the greenhouse, and they'll release their heat at night to keep the greenhouse warm. So if you've got an outdoor greenhouse, um, that's some of the little things that I do. I put uh, bricks and or pavers uh, at the bottom. I've got a whole lot of pavers ready to go in underneath mine uh, right now as we speak that I dug up around the garden um, that were just lying around. They were underneath the earth actually. So hopefully that helps. Uh, night everyone, bedtime for this old dog. Good night mate and um, thank you so much um, for all your support. Uh, yep, Monsanto is one of the ones that uh, obviously push these agendas and we need to change our mindset away from, they've got billions of dollars, they know how to market and they will market under other brands that aren't Monsanto just to um, move around in the, in the radar and extract money from us. And uh, yeah, good afternoon. Good afternoon, 18Bs, awesome channel. Right in the regenerative stuff, doing the bees. If you're into that type of thing, Go and check it out. Highly recommended. 
really love it. So, uh, yeah, good plug for him. And uh, look, it is a really good channel. Okay, Worm Farm. I did to try, always Worm Farm, I did try to winterize my strawberries. It's heavy mulch. Yeah, I guess you need to be a little bit more how we're talking about if they're in pots or if they're in the ground. But that's a really good tip. I plan to plant more flowers to bring in more beneficial bugs. Um, yeah, so what we want to do is have like a, an array of different colors, different heights and levels and things like that from, from on the ground to mid, mid height to um, up, up, up high again and uh, create these levels and variety, as much variety as possible. Um, I even have like, I'm planting natives here in Australia, grevilleas and clistamons and things like that. And they bring in the honey eating birds and they also bring in sugar into the system because it's producing sugars out of the end of the flowers, which brings in other insects. And it also creates habitat for other insects and little birds and everything to, to hang out and stuff. So uh, yeah, that's going up the side of my fence at the moment. Then I'm also gonna be planting edibles in and around that uh, in, in that space. Uh, little trees, um, little, little shrubs, uh, understory things like that. Anything where I can go along and harvest um, food and that area I just mulch, a bit of, a bit of compost, um, maybe twice a year and pull out, get, just grab the old weed here and there and then it pretty much takes care of itself. Uh, it's one of those gardens that you don't have to put a lot of work into. I had one at the other space, um, a very small space uh, down at where I was near Port Macquarie there and it was the mini food forest. It produced a lot of food and I only had what, one tenth of what I got now, if that. Um, so yeah. You know, bring in, get more flowers, bring in the beneficial bugs. And thanks to, thank you, JT Grow in Alaska. Deborah Dixon, I've seen some bees buzzing around my lemon tree flowers. It's always exciting when you see the bees coming in, right? Oh, let's pull up our first image for today, and then I'll move down through the list of what I've got prepared here. Now, have a little bit of uh, leniency with me. I'm still learning how to do this and pushing myself to produce better content uh, live and things like that. So let's see if we can get the first image up. One, two, three, boom. You can hear me well. Can you hear me okay? Hopefully still can. <laughs> Hopefully everything's working. Now you probably think, oh, Marty, you're talking about all this holistic stuff, growing in the ground and all that type of thing. But what I wanna do, I want to talk about vertical space. Now I've got another image coming up with vertical space, if I can find it in the right order. And what we want to do in these type of systems is we're recycling, right? So we're DIYing everything that we've got and we're planting lots of variety as well. And you know, if we're just using some good compost and some worm castings, we can actually grow these systems quite efficiently. We have water bottles stacked on top of each other with water running between uh, each bottle, saving water uh, and, and then watering the next plant uh, down below. And then we can actually like still compost these, these plants and things like that. And we can use such as you can see on the walls here in the cooler areas, the warmth of the wall will reflect light and also uh, radiate heat back. And, but just be careful in summer, really hot, you could do the opposite and burn your plants. But in the cooler seasons, great way to do it. Or if you live in a cooler climate or you've got a spot that's sort of semi-shaded and plants, so they do quite well with a little bit of uh, the semi-shade, such as your herbs and leafy greens and, and things like that. So don't be scared to use your space vertically. Uh, it's very important uh, to do that. And you can grow a lot of food if you're going vertical up the walls and also have your garden beds down below. And if you don't have space for garden beds, you can do this. And there's heaps of content on Pinterest. I got this shot from off a of Pinterest photo and uh, you can find lots and lots of stuff there like that. So let's just go through these images here. Um, I wanna try and find the next vertical one. So here's like a walk through tunnel and I'm pretty sure this is going some type of, really type of lovely beans. Now we can grow this you know, using a lot of space vertically. And we can actually, now she's just got, it looks like just beans growing here, but you could have lots of different things planted in with this. Like if that was me, I would have um, cucumbers running up. I'd also have peas running up and I'd have anything that's sort of like, as these beans are about to die out, I'll be running up some type of small 
Um, like you can get these little tiny rock melons, you know, like a baby rock melon or something like, along those lines. I have a succession planning going. And I'd also have on the side, I'd be racking pots on the side, hanging pots on the side of there so I can use my space abundantly. Combined with, uh, if you can have it, a worm farming and composting system. So everything that you're harvesting there, so when those beans are finished, you'd be chopping them at the ground and you'd be composting them again, ready to use that material back into your other containers and things. Now, if you don't have composting systems, you can grow, go and go buy a really good high-end quality potting mix uh, to work on the pot on the pots and things like that. So think about your vertical space, how you can move forward with this and use it efficiently. And when you look at an image like this, go, how can I do that even better or do something similar? It doesn't have to be a big long one. It could just be a, you know, a one meter by one meter arch by about five to six feet high um, as you enter a little doorway or something like that. You start using that space and then we start thinking about how we can grow more fresh food at home than we ever need when we start using our vertical space, right? So we've got in the ground and vertical. So we're going to come back to another image now and um, give me a big thumbs up if you're enjoying the show. I know I'm, I am working on getting these productions better and hopefully in time uh the people that are watching the reruns won't unsubscribe because they do unsubscribe a lot from these videos and that was one of the reasons why i stopped making them but i know i can make them better so <laughs> keep on rolling on let's have a look at the next image right this is like the homestead dream right this is like gold this is gold man this is you know like to me i love this type of stuff and I think you can make them any size space. I love how you got the gate and you enter in and you open this beautiful space and you can work in there. And so you can have your composting area, you can have your vertical gardens, you can have your in the ground gardens and you can really enjoy creating something uh, like this sort of homesteady style, you know, some fruit trees and different things. Now, how I would make this even better is uh, I like how you walk in and you've got some grass and things like that. Now, in between, I wouldn't have grass. I would have, that would just be all wood chip, all mulch, mulching down. And so as that's breaking down, that mulch that's in the rows uh, is going back into the garden. For me, that's just mowing lawn. It's another job that you've got to do. I would have it so you're walking over some nice wood chip and then I'd have the first row where she's standing in that would be harvested the, the first three months, the second three, in six months time, the middle row where you can see the gate and then nine months down the line, you would have the next row and you'd just go back uh, every, th every you know, three or quarters and throwing that back into the garden and you start filling back again with the mulch again on one side. Now what that does is that creates microbial highways for the insects and everything and you know, like all the millipedes and worms and all that stuff to connect easy from garden to garden. And we're recycling and using everything. So I'd also have a little mulcher. And so I would up the side, I'd have some little trees and things growing. As I'm cutting them back and keeping them to size and pruning, I would be mulching. Uh, I'm pretty sure you get good electric mulchers now and uh, even battery ones will be coming up in the future. So we just stand there and as we're weeding and feeding and mulching and that we're just going zzz, 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 zzz just throwing it into uh, into that system. All right, so if you're digging the show, make sure you give me a big thumbs up, guys. Love to get, get the thumbs up. Let's the YouTube algorithm know that things are cranking here um, at the moment. Now, we're going to have a bit of a question uh, question and answers more towards the end. Um, so if you want to have you got any questions, um, that's generally what we do. We cover the topic and then move into question and answers. So sorry if I haven't gotten any of your questions and answers at the moment, but um, I will be bringing cross comments and things, but questions, not just yet, guys. All right, my garlic turned stupid. It's called witch's broom. I ended up harvesting it and popped the clover in the freezer. Keep up the great work. Well, yeah, you too, man. Keep it up. And uh, sounds like uh, I've never grown actually garlic, tell you the truth. So uh, hats off to you and uh, all the best. Um, and if I sometimes I'd miss you, um, please forgive me and maybe we will um, keep moving forward. Uh, just we just talk about the topics now at the moment. Um, if you keep if you make your sentences too long, I can't fit them. 
on the page, sorry, but I could read this out. Yes, growing walls, but I haven't figured out how to keep them watered in really hot weather. You've got to have some distance. Um, the walls just get too hot and reflect too much light. So they're more really designed for cooler climates and the coolest times of the year. Uh, other than that, you build your own growing wall that's sort of out from, from the wall um, and sort of go that way. Okay, let's keep moving down. And if you've got any, everyone's asking anything to anyone else in the group, please do so and I'll just scroll through and um, have it seen. So we've got Jojo Blogs. I'll have to take a heap of snaps and send it to you, Marty. Yeah, thanks, mate. Uh, if I've got time, I'm super busy. Um, but, you know, generally I do try and find my time to um, to take a look. Now, Joe sent a great uh, concept about getting the... Um, from like Woolies and Coles and supermarkets and things, you can get these like sprouts that you eat um, where the, you know, you've got alfalfa sprouts and mung bean sprouts. And sometimes you have a little square container has peas and beans and lentils in it. You can get some of those, eat some of those and sprout those to grow at home. Great tip, a few dollars and um, you've already got some good quality food that you can grow fast. And I like the idea of getting the snow peas out and planting those, you know, or or growing them, growing them on further. Um, so yeah. Thank you so much for sharing that with me the other day, Jojo Blogs. Um, so just keep your comments shorter if you can. I just can't seem to fit them in today for some reason. I don't know what's going on here. Um, yeah. I've now got 15 gallon buckets rotating my two gardens, slow dripping worm tea. My neighbors are catching on too. Unreal, that's what we wanna see. Show up to more people. We're expanding out this holistic way of gardening. 18Bs is right into this holistic stuff. I know that because we uh, conversed each other in comments for many years and um, he's been yeah, a good supporter of this channel as well. So thank you very much. And we've got Scotty from Garden Kings here. Hey mate, good morning to you. Uh, thanks for popping up and you inspired me the other day to keep on going. And you said, yep, we, you love the live shows. And so we are, yeah, we're on the, we're on the program. And Joe says, garlic is easy as long as it's not overwatered. Yeah, I grow most, a lot, a lot of the shallots and the, the, the onions and different things. Uh, not, you know, the small little ones that I use in stir fries and stuff. I'm going to have to have a go at, at, at garlic at some stage. Um, planted mustard leaves, they've gone to flower and the bees absolutely love. They just love mustard, don't they? They really do. It's those, the colourful flowers and they come in and uh, just get... Yeah, just abundance of insects. So yeah, great one to have. Great day, Marty. Catch up, catch you another time. Thank you so much. It's probably pretty late there, I think. Um, now, as I said before, I can't put these long comments across, guys. So I'll just read it out. Marty, I think you should do 60 litre tubs of potatoes and show people just how many potatoes you can yield. I'm not a big potato eater, so I just won't, you know, uh, I probably won't do that unless I had someone help me and do it and then I'd film them sort of thing. But I love the concept, but I'm not sure about that. I'm not a big potato eater and neither is my daughter. So uh, yeah, all right. Restoring and healing the land is sort of how we're moving forward now. So I'm gonna go into uh, another image to see if we haven't looked at this one already. Now you can see here, uh, this image, here we've got some raised garden beds and then you've got lots of uh, things in the ground, right? And there's a lot of biodiversity there. And so if we're moving away from digging in the garden all the time and moving our mindset away from um, this sort of petrochemical and pesticide systems of fighting the garden and actually becoming a caretaker of the garden, you can start getting really good results like this. You need to understand that you need to have a balance of all the types of insects. If you have an overbalance of the bad insect, there's a reason for it. And obviously you're not providing enough habitat for the good insects, the birds, the lizards, the frogs, and things like that, that will create this, this balance. We're creating this natural little ecosystem. So by having uh, water lying around for our insects and birds and things to eat, uh, levels of habitat, so you can see here, They've got some high, some plants, some shrubs that are a bit higher. Then they've got low, down low, and then you've got a mid-range as well. And then there's some flowers and things like in the right corner. That looks like it's a whole lot of uh, rocket arugula into flower to me and different herbs. 
And so if you're creating a diversity, there might even be a worm farm up behind that red, uh, there's like a red vertical uh, grid there as well. Like, And um, there might be a worm farm up behind that. And I'm pretty sure on the left-hand corner, that's like some type of little fruit tree or something. So there's a lot of biodiversity in this garden. That's why I really like it. And that creates an abundance of food because we're not just focused on, say, growing just tomatoes or just herbs or just a few vegetables, which is good if that's all we can do, which is you know better than nothing. But when we've just got a small space, we can still think about our levels. So we've got a high level, a mid level, and a low level. And the low level plants that will creep along the ground, such as like mints and other different herbs and thyme and things like that, you can shove them in the spaces where you wouldn't believe that you would normally grow, right? So you put it in a crack where there might be some weeds growing or something like that. You remove the weed, fill it with some thyme, you know. Uh, think about how you can use your space uh, efficiently and you will get um, really, really uh, good results uh, from that. So hopefully that's really, that's inspiring you to think about growing more holistically and bringing more diversity of plants in. We've got more diversity of plants. We're creating habitat and, and we also get better chance of success because what we do is the ones that aren't growing well, that are not happening for us, we remove them and we replace them with something else that goes in that space and we replace them with the seasons as well. And we have we have annuals growing and then we have perennials growing, which we can harvest all the time. And then we have biennials going. So the biennial would be something like the parsley plant, which will just keep on giving for you know anywhere from two to four years um, if you take really good care of that plant. And so we plant a couple of parsley every year and then you know, you've got this succession going and then when it, you know, if you don't let the parsley go to seed, it will grow on back through the next season. If you want it to get it for the seed, you can actually let the seed just spread around everywhere and see where it comes up and leave it or harvest. Like when it spreads around everywhere, people think, oh, it's making a big mess. Okay, so you're thinking out this mindset, you're fighting the garden again. I want you to remove that mindset. You want to think about, oh, where it grows, sprouts and grows. If it grows really well, it loves being there. And so the other ones that you won't want to keep, you harvest them as baby leaf or baby herbs and you, you just cut them off at the base, put them on with a bit of lettuce and a bit of herbs and things like that with your meals. So try to let nature work for you as well, but also keep this nice, you know, we want it to look nice and tidy and be able to take care of it. But, you know, sometimes it is just amazing letting some plants go to seed and see what they do. Uh, into the uh, coming seasons. So we'll move on to uh, any more um, comments here and see how we go. Okay, I'm soaking mung beans, change water daily after five to seven days, the shoots are yummy. Let's see if we can get this comment. I don't know why, but uh, yeah, we have to keep the comments down a little bit shorter. I can't get them all across. Sorry about that, guys. It's just a process that I'm learning with. The girls spent their first night out last night. Oh, the girls, that's the chickens. I bet you they, oh. How'd they go, mate? You don't have anything around that can get them at night time? <laughs> I like to keep mine. I lock mine in the coop every night because we've got snakes and foxes here. But, yeah, if you're in the city, it's probably all right. Uh, Marty, you're a good example of perseverance. <laughs> Thank you, my friend. Um, I think that, uh, yeah, some days I think, oh, wow, what am I doing? Um, because like I said, I don't follow these YouTube trends and so I don't, and algorithms, things like that, so I don't really grow as fast as what other people should. I always have this, this story to tell and to push people forward into, um, you know, and now it's, you know, the worm farming, it's a holistic tool for farming and using the inputs that's coming into our place from outside and then building up and building fertilizers and liquids and things like that so we can actually use it uh, in the garden. So that's why I pushed it so heavily and then the composting pushed that really heavily and which is on the channel here a lot and about using inputs such as the coffee grounds and the you know um, the wood chip and the mushroom compost and all that type of stuff. So I don't 
generally go back and repeat myself too much but the thing is those old videos they're, they're there now on the channel people can go in and have a look at them and learn be educated and at the same time um have a bit of entertainment i hope there's some entertainment there um coming in the videos so you know now's the time to as i said i'm probably a bit far forward with it regenerative systems are happening more now with farming when I went to the old farmers years ago, they would laugh at me and tell me to get off their land, basically. <laughs> um, go on, get off. It's almost like when you go get the big shotgun and, you know, like, you're not, you, you, you're not doing that on my place. We're throwing out fertilizer t tomorrow. I'm like, why don't you just mulch more and, um, you know, start a composting system every time you, you know, you harvest, you, know, you need to actually keep your trees smaller anyway because they're big and dangerous. You should be like mulching those and throwing it back on. So everything that's the tree sucked out of the ground is going back in. Oh, no, no, get out. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> like the cartoon. I actually felt like that, honest to God. Um, so, you know, I know I'm just having a bit of a laugh here, but uh, yeah, that's pretty much what it was like. 100% um, correct, Marty. The more nature, more nature is mimicked, wildly everything intermingles. And it's self perpetuating, self perpetuating ecology. Very much, very much so. It, and it just gets better and better as we build habitat out and could work on our systems and things like that. So, Jane Dixon, I'm struggling with parsley. I think the possum made it after. Go get some, um, some I'm going to do this with my tomatoes because I've got a rat underneath the house. So, you know, we had like this place wasn't taken care of at all. It was full of undergrowth up the side of the house and everything before I moved in. And there's some rats in the wall, I believe, and maybe even one or two under the house. I'm hoping the big python gets them. The cat across the road gets them. Uh, they're grabbing the odd tomato. They come and chew on the side of the tomato. You see these scarring on the side. Of the they really like the, the green striped tomatoes that I grow for some reason. I don't know why. But chili powder, man. I'm next shop, I'm getting chilli powder. I'm just going to put it all around the garden. So any of those little mammals come in, it doesn't hurt the birds at all. Uh, Papain or whatever it is, the chemical that's in there affects mammals. So they sniff around, sniff, sniff, bit of chilli powder up their nose. Got to be consistent with it for a while. And you know what it's like. You get a bit of chilli powder up your nose or in your eye, right? It's gnarly. <laughs> so <laughs> they don't forget. It works great. It works great. I've proven it with possums. And kangaroos, so uh, give that a shot. I'm currently doing a new pond at the moment for more frogs. Oh man, unreal, unreal. Um, yeah, we've got lots of frogs out the back here, and maybe one day I'll build a little pond as well. Uh, I'd like to do that, some type of little wetland area. Still designing everything out at the moment. Where at the moment it's more about just getting lots of food, getting the soil really good, and building my habitat, so um, I don't have to worry about uh, pests and disease are uh, so much. Do you have insect hotels and bees? I don't keep bees. I used to have native bees at the other place. I sold it to um, a school when I when I left, and uh, I actually know it got donated to a school, and uh, yeah, they've got it now. And so I might get another native beehive maybe in the future, but they're quite expensive. I do like them, and um, I just like seeing the bees that come in from the area. I'm allergic to the European bee. Just I swell up and stuff. I don't I won't die or anything or um, have any type of hyper, what they call hyper something fits or whatever. But uh, yeah, they don't really agree with me too much. But I love them. I love seeing them more. I love seeing all the different types, the different colours and all that type of stuff. So bring in more nature, get more holistic, and then you can grow more fresh food than you ever need once these systems start getting into place. We need to think, remove that mindset of fighting the garden, as I said before, and fighting the insects. We need to actually just create habitat and home for the homes for these. And the, the bee hotels uh, is one good way to do it. So how a lot of us gardeners get it wrong with the bee hotel systems is um, in cooler climates, they'll actually go underneath the mulch and things like that, and the leaf litter and stuff, and they'll hibernate. Their, their whole heart system shuts down like a bear. Um, and uh, compost worms will do it as well in the cooler areas. And so we need to create this habitat for them. So 
we need to actually before fall or we're just on fall when they're starting to you know things start to cool down we need to start mul keep our mulch then you know um, not in winter or whatever or or earlier come in and just throw it all in or move it all out because we we're, we're, we're affecting their habitats we want to build up the mulch areas and the habitat for the winter and cooler times for them to hide and hibernate and come out in spring. So we allow enough time for them to come out again in spring. Once they're all out, we remulch again, right? So think about how we're doing this. We need to not affect their habitat in between the seasons when they're when they're hibernating. Okay, really important, and uh, create as much habitat as we can for them to thrive and survive. A lot of them even lay eggs and things down in these mulches, um, and then they they don't uh, germ that don't not germinate. I was going to say they won't open up until the every like it's some rain and it gets warm, and so then they come out and you'll see little baby you know like praying mantis and things like that. I think they do that. So think about how you're doing your habitat when your mulching systems. Think like an insect would like to be treated and you will be able to make, yeah, amazing. You will grow abundance, believe you me. I know that we're saying, oh no, we want it now, 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 tomorrow. If you do start potted gardens, right? And then build out your habitat around it and your space and you will have abundance uh, before you know it. Okay, so let's go on here. Jojo blogs. Frogs being a wet skin reptile that breathes through its skin, it's a great indicator of ecological health. It really is. That's a really great comment. If you've got them around, you know you're doing the right thing. Marty, me man, how's it going? I'm going great, Rob. Thank you. Hey, Marty. My system doesn't like like lives, but so far, so good. Well, we're here, and uh, you're welcome. Welcome, man. Peppy Fassos. Hey, mate. Um, he's on Instagram a lot, and Peppy Fassos... Uh, has supplied me with uh, microgreen seeds and some flowers, edible flowers, and they are just awesome, these edible flowers that you've, so thank you so much for those. They're providing nice little flower habitats around the bottom of bale garden. I just absolutely love them. And uh, yeah, and, and also you've also provided the, what is it called, the Garlic Society Garlic, and they just bulb out at the bottom, and I'll be giving some of them away and we're already starting eating the flowers and we'll eat some of the leaves from them in the future as well. So thank you so much, Pepe Fassos. And I wonder if he will be making any more videos, but at the moment, it's going organic. Don't panic, it's organic. Organic farming, 560 farms in Lismore. Jojo blogs. I'll be doing beehives not too far in the future, one step at a time. That's unreal. Speak with 18 bees about it if you um, want to get some help there. Maybe you can guide you into doing a different type of beehive, a more holistic one. Uh, okay. Some more interesting comments on on, uh, on bees there. And uh, it's, again, it's a bit long. I can't fit it in. So uh, the, the pe I've got to think about the people that are actually going to be watching the rerun as well. So you can keep the... The comments a bit shorter for the moment. I don't know why it's not fitting in so well. My apologies uh, for that. So what I'm going to do, so I want to go back to this. Let's have a look through these images here. Um, and see what we've got here. Uh, let's have a look. Let's have a look at this one again. Now I want to talk about how we can um improve on a system like this and i talked about the mulch in the centers right i want to talk about habitat around the outside so you would be planting like um think about it in a permaculture system you would be planting some fruit trees you'd be planting some natives now natives are really important to the area because this is what your native birds and and insects will feed on right and they use as habitat they're used to it and they feel comfortable, they'll nest in it, and they'll come around and hang, in it, hang out in it more regularly. So if you've got a spot where there's cool breezes coming from one side and you wanna trap some warmth, you can create like, say like in one corner there, uh, let's just say the top right corner, that's where I would create a higher point where the sun isn't being blocked out. So that's like the spot with the coolest sun, so the sun's not coming from that way, and we're trapping the heat in that corner creating building habitat, putting in maybe some nut trees, 
um, you know, uh, maybe an avocado, something like that, uh, a fruit tree, and then some natives around it. Your, big, your, your taller one. So you want to still have one big tall one sticking out the top. So like a big bird will come on, like a big kookaburra here or something, he'd land up the top and he'd be up high and he'd be looking down, ready to hunt, going, oh, yeah, yeah. And he might see like a snake that's in the garden. He might see a big lizard or something like that. He might see a rat, which you hope, or a mouse. Even like owls and things at night will come and they'll sit in there and look and they see a mouse or something in there, whoop, down and just grab it. So it's not thinking, we've got to think about our levels of habitat, the different birds, bees, things like that, nesting areas, little finches, they like to be in little shrubs down low and stuff. They don't like to be up high because they feel insecure. So, and you know, smaller birds that are mid-range size birds, they like to be up and around the mid-range. They hang in packs like miners and they'll go around and they'll learn and teach each other how to get grubs and things out of the garden and stuff like that. Um, as it evolves, they're teaching their family and thing how to hunt and survive and thrive in these systems. And don't worry about a crow coming in and grabbing the odd tomato and things like that. They're gonna, these birds are gonna do more for your garden than you think, than you can even see as well. You wanna actually give out to them at the same time as nature gives to you. So remember, remove the fighting landscape. Become caretakers of the land, my friends. And you know, you will just be creating beautiful, lovely gardens that will just keep on giving uh, over time. I, I can't really stress this enough about the change in the mindset of becoming a caretaker of the land. You look at the indigenous people, how they just caretake the land and the food just kept on giving. As soon as we come in and combated it and started becoming too overly greedy, what did the land do? It started taking away, right? So we need to give, 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 give. Same like me today, I'm giving my all my energy here to teach you guys and help you guys understand about holistic systems and thinking in a holistic manner and removing yourself away from the old marketing that has been pounded into us. Boom, 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 to take our dollar away from us. And now we can put our dollars in our pocket and we can use everything that we use and come in from when we're shopping and stuff and those foods and vegetables and things get recycled everything on site and when you're mowing a lawn you're composting it or you're leaving the grass dead grass on the lawn to go back into the lawn we don't want to take things away when a green bin should be nearly empty every um every week or fortnight we need to learn these systems um, instead of letting it go out to the council and creating another problem uh, there so i've got my list here i want to make sure that i'm doing everything right now i want to go back to um that image again because if I can get the right image up here this one again now I was talking about putting the the, the, the compost um, the carbon down the rows so the mulch down the rows by creating highways so I want you to think about how you create these 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 highways for the fungi to move to each other and then sort of move through and create these systems where the worms can get through and move under and things by connecting worm farms to the ends of some parts of the cooler part of the garden where it's mulch and they move under the mulch and come back in the system. In here, I would have three or four of the biggest worm farms ever, some underground worm farms and then some small worm farms in the in one corner for getting my liquids and things. And, you know, you have your one mother worm farm or two mother worm farms where they're just like, they're feeding that other system. So every year you're going great or every six months grabbing some out of there and putting it into the other worm farm. They move around and you just keep back feeding it back in and in. And you'll find that eventually the compost worms will find themselves in other spots and you'll be going through there one day doing some tilling or something or, you know, pulling some plants out or whatever. And you go, oh, wow, there's compost worms under here. Where did they come from? Who would have thought, you know? So, um, and think about how your earthworms would be working as well. You want them coming up underneath, grabbing that carbon and pulling that carbon uh, back down into the ground, right? And drilling holes and making your soil more fertile. We want, when it rains, the water going down into the soil as deep as possible and building these water banks, right? For times of drought, um, we want the water to actually get away so there's more oxygen in the soil. So, but it stores at the same time. And how we do that is by composting and carbon. Now, these small trees and these plants Every time we're, we're cutting and harvesting, we're leaving the roots in the ground, 
we're leaving carbon in the ground and we're creating these carbon banks at the same time, which then the microbes and fungi and everything feed on it. You're giving them a food source. So think about above the ground as well as below the ground. We are actually caretakers of that. And so we're thinking about our creating our ecology, our habitat above and below the ground, our levels, mid-range, low-range, and and bottom range, and thinking about habitats for lynx, skinks, lizards, birds, all these type of things. And don't fight nature and you will come on. You'll be working more in a regenerative mindset, right? With thinking about that. And I'm going to be producing videos uh, coming up and doing a series about regenerative gardening and your small space, vegetable garden, homestead, things like that. And we've got one coming up about the chicken fence coming up. It's been produced. It'll be out a few days to a week, something like that along those lines. So let me know if you'd like to see uh, that type of thing about how to just heal the land where you live, improve it, make it better so it just keeps on giving. And you'll see my place as it grows, uh, the advantages uh, of that. Let's pull across some more um comments here sorry i haven't got to all of them just a lot to cover today uh in this we've been going for 51 minutes 25 people watching 27 thumbs up please give us a big thumbs up if you haven't already if you're enjoying the show maybe consider uh, a super chat they really do help um, the channel grow not the channel grow but helps with the support of keeping things going and you can find that the bottom of the comments box is also uh, a members area over at buy me a coffee slash marty's garden where you can support monthly if you'd like to do so and uh, there's in the description there's a link for that down below and uh yeah so i'm going to keep scrolling through here and i find a closet bed to the worm farm becomes a worm farm closet bed that sounds like an interesting system. Maybe you'll do a video on that on your channel, eh? We'll get, get to see Jojo blog swales. Yeah, so swales are a good idea. If you want to move the water around, things like permaculture system. Um, doing something similar to that here in time where the water will be moving around and being used efficiently in sort of a swale system. Worm towers in the garden work well. Yeah, just I find bigger, more, more surface area. A lot of them are too small and narrow. Um, they come at the top, so the more surface area, the better they do. That's why I invented the biggest worm farm ever system. Uh, go on fishing. See you, mate. Good luck. Catch some fish. Worm, without worms, plants struggle. Yeah, we need it. We need that whole living living web. There's some, some saying you, you, you're taking care above the ground and you're caring below the ground. And my mantra is always so I'll feed the soil, not the plants, and you'll always do uh, really, really great. So we keep moving through here, and wow. All right, so Pepe Fassos, you are just, you're always so much of a giver, mate. Thank you so much. Um, that is just, yeah, it makes my day. We've got the fake applause cloud, crowd here. Well, you can imagine them being real. And uh, hang on, guys, you need to be a bit louder. We'll go again, come on, come on, go again. There we go. Thank you so much for that. We also have the boss, the DJ Airhorn. He loves that. <laughs> and uh, thank you so much, mate. That point you made of being a caretaker is the best thing I've heard in ages. We pay it forward always. Well, thank you so much. Really appreciated, uh, Pepe. And I'm looking to coming out to the farm and uh, filming out there uh, when you're ready to go because you're going organic man it's just it's exciting certified organic man it's just unreal and i'm looking forward to talking about how we're going to set up these worm farm systems to feed this organic farm so i'm really looking forward to that and uh yeah again thank you very much and uh bless you and your family my friend okay michael dvorak hey your idea about regeneration of small gardens would be groovy well michael that's really what i've been really been talking about for the last few years um, but I just haven't really used the terminology of it because people weren't really ready and you scare people away and they just start thinking you're like this new age gardener sort of thing but um, you know like that's what I'm doing here that's the story of this space here um, I'm just a one-man band project right so 
again, I need it to sort of be efficient. I need it to be productive. And I need it to be able to not just take all my time, still have time to do the content for you guys, time for me and uh, my daughter. And, you know, hopefully, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm psyching on maybe having another family again at some stage. And, um, you know, things are going to get pretty wild here. <laughs> no, it's gone, so it's got to be caretaker. And I just love the concept of it. And I just think, I look at it and go, that's just getting better and better and more productive and more beautiful. And it just stalls in your heart more and more over time. And um, that's what I want to share. And I know that other people can do that too. A lot of stuff that we see online, it's 10 tips to do this now, seven tips to get big tomatoes right now. But it doesn't help you long term. It's great for now to get that now, but it doesn't help you long term. So hopefully we can mix all this through and really share that. And uh, so thank you so much, Michael, for um, sharing that through. Yes, I'd like to learn how to deal with my dirt. We we'll just you know, start composting, Daisy. And look at uh, a worm farming if you haven't already and just start small uh, and then expand out. So um, i got a big pile. i got three square metres of mulch, um, wood chip, palm and all that stuff dumped at the front yard yesterday. I got it for free. Um, the people with the arborists were up the street. He said, yep, I was dropping. He's only two doors up, man. Boom. And I'm going to be using that to do a lot of work here. Um, so we're going to be using it to probably fill some of the raised garden beds when Mark from Self Sufficient Me comes. And then we'll be using it some, you know, like in some of the worm farming areas. I don't even know if I'm going to have enough. I, look, I'd love to have seven metres just dropped from the front yard, to tell you the truth, maybe even 20. Uh, but, you know, three or four square metres for free is, is a great start. Um, so, yeah, think about composting, mulching, and getting that carbon in from uh, as many cheap sources as you can. Okay, I don't know what you mean here. You might need to be a little bit more, um, or I've missed something in the comments. Lol, A plus sound effects. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so it's all, all fun. We've got to have a bit of fun while we do this at the time. I know a lot of, some people don't like it. They just think, oh, well, but, you know, I've got to enjoy myself at the same time, right, and have a bit of a laugh. Pepe Fassos to Jojo Blogs. We are caretakers, custodians. We cannot fight nature or we all suffer. Nature always wins. Yeah, yeah, it, it really does. And look, um, actually, Pepe knows this because he was a victim of the, the floods on the north coast here. And um, so, again, my heart goes out to you and your family, mate. But I'm just stoked that you're up and running again. And the Lord's going to bless you, brother. And uh, it's going to happen, and I'll help pass on the blessings as well as you have done for me. Um, so thank you so much again. And uh, yeah, we just need to keep moving on. I've got my list here. We're nearly close to uh, an hour again. So if you want to do a QA and a now, we can uh, move that through. If you've got any questions that you'd like to ask, I know there's a few of you chatting uh, in between here, which is really, really great. And yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's really good to see when people are really starting to get this now. Like I said, 20 years or plus more years ago now, um, I was fighting this battle, talking about regeneration. The only people that were in the scene were permaculturists and the odd organic farmer. We were very, very rare. And um, now there's just more people moving into, uh, you know, sustainable agriculture systems, you know, regenerative uh, farming systems such as Syntropics where I made that other video about, you know, copy this system to put into your garden or onto your farm. Um, and it's looking at these holistic ways. Um, we don't have to absolutely always grab that one system. We can create many different systems and put them all together like what I'm doing. I'd like to one day come up with something, some type of name for these small backyard systems that are regenerate and re-give and just keep on giving. Um, I'd love to come up with a name so maybe in the time we can produce something that um, has its own banner, so to speak, because in, in, some way, in many regards it does fly under um, a little bit of a different banner, but we just don't really have any name for it. Like I was one of the first guys to come up with micro farming uh, online and I owned the keyword for that and even like in parts of YouTube and things. Um, and then now that, that terminology would have been some people using it, but they mostly just said urban farming in those days. And then micro farming is now a common terminology uh, used throughout uh, throughout the world. 
And so I'm pretty proud of that uh, achievement, even though, you know, like a lot of people mightn't agree with me at the time, but I know that people who've been watching me since maybe eight, nine years ago know that that's, that's pretty much the case. All right, so uh, let's keep moving forward this, with this and make sure we've got through all the lists. I don't want to miss anything. I think we've covered nearly everything for that. So hopefully you've enjoyed it and you've found some ways to uh, change your mindset about not fighting against nature, going with nature, improving it, healing it, create restoring balance and bringing it back. Now, it seems like it can take a long time, but no, it doesn't. If you're doing something like a bale garden like I'm doing, it becomes very quick and a fast system. I've been putting lots of videos out about worm farming and then the bale gardening has sort of been updates and things like that and stuff. There's a, some more, another one coming out soon about the bales, how they're going. And they're just starting to become alive now. There's fungi coming out of the sides of them. There's worms going up underneath them, native worms. And there's the compost worms are starting to crawl through the top layers as well. So this, this system mathematically is building up pace now. And as these microbes and fungi start to explode and start to have more food systems, uh, better soil and things for them, more ha better habitat below the ground as well, um, then I can start expanding out into this whole uh, yard. And the chickens are playing a big role on that. So we've got a, the video coming up about the sustainable systems that I'm using with chickens, how I'm moving them around the yard with the portable fence to create an agriculture, like similar to an agricultural regenerative system using those chickens. They're giving me eggs, they're weeding for me, they're cleaning up the snails and the slugs and things, and they're also they're tilling the soil. The soil's actually getting better down where they were um, before. So keep an eye open for that coming up. Uh, it's gonna be really cool. And if you've got any questions, uh, fire away, guys. We've got a few more minutes to go before we play our theme song. We all have a chat and say goodbye. And, uh, yeah, it's just happy, happy days, I reckon. And I'm just I'm really excited about the future of what's coming forward. Um, I have been doing some news videos lately, you know, those news ones about farming and you know, petrochemicals and the, the problems around um the only problem with that is that it's a bit different, it diversifies off a bit too much and it might, might confuse some of my listeners, even though I love doing that type of stuff. So I'm thinking maybe I need to make a second channel, which is more news orientated, update sort of orientated about what's going on and things and um, more of a sort of a talking head with slideshow sort of style, um, keeping people updated. So if you think that would be a good idea, uh, I'd like to know uh, if you'd watch something like that. They were fairly popular. I think we did about 700 views or something on that one. Australian agricultural expert shares his thoughts. Of, I'm worried on the on the thumbnail, which I actually am. Um, you know, we're still a good year away before we're going to be fully affected by it. And us urban farmers and gardeners and things like that, we need to prepare first. So I'm trying to just create this mindset, preparing now and producing you know, this beautiful food. Because even though you say, oh, well, I'm not worried about that, but you should be worried about preparing your ground and bringing in, building up ecology and habitat around your place. Because you can imagine if the whole street, you know, doing something similar. My lady next door, she's got beautiful little um, shrubs and trees and things like that. So all those little, everything from there is going to slowly move across into my garden and it's connected um, next door behind this, the other side as well. They've got shrubs and trees, and then there's a little forest down further. So it's all connecting up uh, into these into these highways. So, yeah, pretty stoked about that. I'll get this across. Jojo Blocks, 250 red wriggler worms. If tended correctly, will give you 35,000 worms in the, in a year. Um, depends on how you look at it and where you, what your climate is and how everything's going. But if you can do the very best you can, they definitely do uh produce quite a lot there's no doubt about that melanie every year my plum tree gets lots of flowers and every year they blow off any tips it could just be in the wrong spot um stone fruit are tricky uh, i'm not a really a stone stone fruit expert i've only just got one now in my yard i've never grown it before ever but it can be fluctuation of temperature of heat and uh, it can also be like your soils aren't right they're just not it's just not enough uh, minerals in the soil to help the flowers set so 
you could possibly, um, if it's not too windy and it's not the actual outside elements, I'd be introducing micronutrients such as rock dust and things like that and look at the flowering element. But always think about don't go out too much to the other. That's what I'm saying. Just get some rock dust and throw that around. That has a good balance of what you need and it'll also feed the, min- the microbes and things. Think about mulching it, getting more worms in. Um, and if you can really get that plant healthy by the ground being healthy, the plant will grow better, stronger cell structure and will become more susceptible to winds and outside damage and things like that. So you want to think about feeding the soil, not the plant, so to speak, um, and that may help you uh, in, into the future. Hopefully that um, does, but without looking and seeing and everything, uh, I can't really give you a good solid answer. Okay, thank you for your videos. Love watching them. Have a great chat. Day. Chill. <laughs> w cat. I don't know what this Coco D, thank you very much. Uh, let's get some music on here. We're going to finish up for today. We've been going for just over one hour. And the theme song. Love the theme song. It is just unreal. If you've got any comments that you'd like to put on, say goodbye to anyone. Say There's a gentle me. breeze put them in All and the we'll birds drag them across We'll wave out the rest of the show the Throughout the next video we'll see. There is a video the on the channel about the tomatoes That just come out With the just come out. With a loved one's clothes You can so pick out every star and, uh, Without a telescope So beautiful to see How we have changed You start watering your plum plants first Stage your fertilizer. Change the schedule when going in the flower. Yeah, good point. So if you grab onto my arm, let's take a walk until the sun gets warm. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming to watch the show. I'm staying right to the end. Still 10 people here. <laughs> Amazing. And uh, look, I love you all. And it's just unreal to be able to share with you all. And um, I really look forward to bringing out more of these live shows to you guys. I think I might be doing one a week early in the week. But we'll work out something. I'll let you know once I'm more settled in. I'm going to be creating these sort of like mini series things about regenerative gardening about creating these systems, you know, using the chickens, using the worm farms and stuff like that. So hopefully you'll get in and support the series so we can get this YouTube channel cranking. Have a great day. Happy everything. We'll see you in the next video real soon. I'll call you next week, bro. Oh, I should have my certificate by then. Oh, that's exciting, Mr. Fassos. 31 likes, 10 watching. Great life. Have a good one, my man. You too. Bye, everyone. And uh, God bless. Bye for now.